Hey, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about limited mechanics for Phyrexia All Will Be One. Just as a heads up to you, there will be leaks and spoiler images in this video, so if you're opposed to that, it might not be the best video to watch. I want to get this right out of the way up front. Toxic is a massive, massive part of this set. I didn't realize it before because I thought maybe there was going to be one color pair that had to deal with Toxic, but the more spoilers that we see and the more cards that we're seeing, there are tons of Toxic cards. The way they seem to work this out is that a lot of color pairs care about poison counters, but they care about it in a slightly different way. So I think this is going to be an interesting limited experience because it's going to cause some bleed over with different archetypes. Because so many color pairs care about Toxic, the opportunity to splash and still maintain that game plan of using poison counters is going to be, I think, pretty viable. So I think it's going to be a pretty splashy set. It could be an aggressive set. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we go forward with all these different archetypes that like Toxic. So without further ado, let's begin with a non-Toxic archetype, if you will, Azorius Artifacts Matter Control. We do not yet have the signpost uncommon for this color pair, but we do have a rare here. It's one blue, one white, one generic for a 1-1. One, one. It's a Phyrexian Elephant Wizard. And when it enters the battlefield, you create a 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. At the beginning of your end step, if three or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control this turn, you create another one. So this cares about artifacts, and it cares about you playing more artifacts to generate more tokens. We also have Unctus Grand Metatech. Two blue, one generic for a 2-4 Phyrexian Vidalcan. Other blue creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes tap, draw a card, discard a card. And other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So here we have the Grand Metatech caring about other artifact creatures and giving them plus one, plus one. You can also pay two life or one blue mana in the form of Phyrexian mana to make a target creature you control a blue artifact in addition to its other types activate only as a sorcery. Third card I have here for you is Encroaching Mycosynth. One blue, three generic, nine land permanents you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for permanent cards you control and non land permanent cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And this itself is an arc, uh, artifact. So you can see how this is meant to snowball and it's a little bit slower of a deck that builds up value over time and uses interaction in the early game, hopefully. So next up we have Blue Black, which they're listing as Corrupted. So this being the official archetype of Corrupted. This also with spoiler alert, black and white. I'm seeing a lot of proliferate on Blue Black cards so far. So it seems like Blue Black wants to deal a few poison counters and then proliferate their way to victory from there. We have Bone Picker Scourge here. One black, two generic for a 2-2 flying imp. It has corrupted as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters. It has death touch and lifelink. Next card we have here is Venser Corpse Puppet. One black, one blue for one three. Lifelink Toxic one. And whenever you proliferate, choose one. If you don't control a creature named the Hollow Sentinel, create it. It's a legendary 3-3 three, three colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. Or target artifact creature you control gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. So you can see a little bit of bleed over here into the Azorius artifact control thing, right? So if you drafted black, blue, white, you could still make an artifact creature gain flying and lifelink until end of turn. And it's like this in a lot of these different draft archetypes. But the unofficial statement so far is that blue-black is the color of Corrupted. Next up we have black-red, and this color is all about sacrifice. Surprise. It's Kethic Crucible Goliath. One red, one black, two generic for a 4-4. Four, four. Beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature if you do reveal cards from the top of your library to reveal a non-legendary creature card with lesser mana value. Put it onto the battlefield, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We also have Urabrask's Forge, which is an artifact. Again, a little bit of bleed over with artifact things. One red, two generic. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put an oil counter on it, which we'll talk about in a little bit with another color pair. Then create an X1 red Phyrexian horror creature token with Trample and Haste, where X is a number of oil counters on it, and then sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. We also have Geth Thane of Contracts, double black, one generic for a three, four other creatures you control get minus one, minus one. And we have a little bit of like a reanimator theme here going. Whenever you sacrifice something, you can bring it back. Double black, one generic, return creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate only as a sorcery. Honestly, we don't have a ton of red and black cards yet, especially the common and uncommons. We're only seeing the rares, but the sacrifice theme is clear and present in the rares. 
Speaking of oil counters, here we are with Gruel, red and green. So this was green, red, one generic for 4-4. Four, four. Phyrexian Beast that comes in with five oil counters on it. Tap one mana to remove one. It gets Vigilance and Menace till end of turn. Two, remove two oil counters from it. Gets plus two, plus two till end of turn. And tap three mana, remove three oil counters from it. Destroy an artifact or enchantment. So you can see here, comes in with oil counters and you spend them in various ways. Next hint we have here, two oil counters matter in red and green. One red, three generic for Urbrask's Anointer. It's a 4-2 when it enters the battlefield, deals X damage to any target where X is the number of permanents you control with oil counters on them. We even have a special land for oil counters, the Monumental Facade. It is a sphere, which is a new land type for this set. It enters with two oil counters on it. It can tap for colorless mana. Or you can tap it to remove an oil counter from the facade and put an oil counter on target artifact or creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery. This is one of the first mechanics for me that looks to be pretty self-contained. So if you're red and green, it looks like there's a specific red and green limited deck that cares about oil counters. And it's pretty solid that doesn't bleed over into other things too much. Next color pair here is Selesnia, or white, green, and it is Toxic Go Wide. You can see here the signpost on common, one of the few that we do have. Two mana for a 2-2 two, two with Toxic 2, and whenever another creature you control with Toxic attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. We also have Skrelv's Hive. This is one white, one generic for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. It also has Corrupted, so it fits into that Orzhov synergy that I was talking about too. As long as an opponent has three or more poison counters, creatures you control with Toxic have lifelink. So you can start to see what I mean where you have the blue-black that cares about Corrupted, but there's a lot of Proliferate. But then we have green-white, which has Toxic as well, and it cares about going wide, but you can still Proliferate poison counters, so they're kind of bleeding into one another. But what they have said so far is that green-white is the color of Toxic go wide, so you're creating a lot of 1-1 tokens, just creating a super wide board and trying to get as many poison counters as you can. So here we have Orzhov, black, white. This is the one that I'm actually the least familiar with because it's the, the one that we have the least amount of cards for currently. We do have Rhea Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. This is a four drop, three, four with battle cry. So when it attacks each other, attacking creature gets plus one, plus zero till end of turn. Good for your little Phyrexian mites. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal damage to one or more players this combat, prevent that damage. And if damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might Artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1 and this creature can't block. Presumably, you want Rhea or Ivor, Ivor to stick around so that way all of your Toxic Mites can become 2-1. So this seems a little bit go-wide to me as well. We're going to have to wait to see what the signpost uncommon is for Orzhov because I can't imagine it's going to be that much different if it's also corrupted and toxic as a mixture. The next archetype we have is blue red and this one is actually really really weird so hear me out on this one they're saying unofficially that this is about rebels and rebels are created in this set with the four mirrodin mechanic if you look at this card when the equipment enters the battlefield you create a 2-2 red rebel creature token then attach this to it so they're saying blue red is kind of like a rebel theme but we also have another mechanic in this set that is white red that is equipment themed so we have this situation where rebels are created by equipment in blue and red, but we have equipment theme as red and white. You see what I'm saying where these are bleeding together? But here are a few of the red and blue equipments here. Dragon Wing Glider. So it's double red, three generic for four Mirrodin. Comes in with a 2-2 rebel attached to it. So it's essentially a 4-4 flying haste. And then if that thing dies, you have a uh, equipment left over that you can re-equip to something. We also have Blade of Shared Souls. This is one blue, two generic, four Mirrodin, two, two rebel. When it comes in, it becomes attached to a creature. For as long as Blade of Shared Souls remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another target creature you control. So I'm not sure if blue red is going to be the mechanic of all these rebels or there's also another thing that I am seeing. We've also got cards like this that care about spells. There's a lot of them in red and blue. Here's Vindictive Flame Stoker, one red for a one, two, when you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it, and then you can tap one red and six generic to sacrifice it, discard your hand and draw four cards. The ability costs one less to activate for each oil counter on Vindictive Flame Stoker. Now I said that oil counters mattered in Gruul, and that's what they've unofficially stated, but it doesn't mean it can't bleed over a little bit. So this, care, this card cares a lot about non-creature spells. Let me show you another one. 
Mercurial Spell Dancer. One blue, one generic for a Phyrexian Rogue that can't be blocked at 2-1. When you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. When Mercurial Spell Dancer deals combat damage to a player, you can remove two oil counters, and then you can copy your next instant or sorcery spell and choose new targets for the copy. Again, we have Ovika Enigma Goliath. This is a 7-drop in Is It Colors. It's a 6-6 six, six flying with Ward 3, Pay 3 life. When you cast a non-creature spell, create X 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste until end of turn. So I'm seeing a lot of blue-red cards that really care about spells. So if it's not the main theme or the main archetype for these colors, it could be a sub-archetype there. So that leads us to Golgari, Black Green, and they're saying that this is the color of Toxic, just straight up Toxic. This is a 4-drop. This is the signpost uncommon, I believe. 4-drop, 1-5 with Toxic 2. When a creature you control with Toxic deals combat damage to a player, that player gets an additional poison counter. So it doubles your poison counters as long as you're only dealing 1. And you can also tap 3 mana target creature you control with Toxic gains Death Touch till end of turn to kind of get them through there. So there are a lot of green cards, a lot of black cards with Toxic. There's a lot of white and blue cards with Toxic. So like, I don't know. I guess this is just the color of straight up vanilla Toxic. That leads us into Simic, uh, green blue. So we have here Go Big Toxic, which is, this is a seven drop card. It's a six, seven Toxic six. And Paladin Predation can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. We also have a uh, Bloated Contaminator here that is a three drop, is a four four trample with Toxic one. Whenever Bloated Contaminator deals combat damage to a player, you proliferate. And we also have a Simic uh, Legendary Creature Gold card here, Azuri Stalker of Spheres. This is a four drop three three. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay three mana if you do proliferate twice. Whenever you proliferate, draw a card. So it seems like you might want to ramp a little bit into this, get one massive toxic creature through with trample damage and deal some poison counters and then proliferate. I'd be interested to know your thoughts in the comments. We haven't seen a lot of Simic cards, actually only this one, but they're saying that Simic is go big toxic. And that leads us to our final uh, archetype, red, white, which I already talked about in the is it colored segment but this is blade hold war whip i believe this is the signpost uncommon for this it's a three drop it has four mirrored in so it again creates that rebel that's kind of what i was getting at with the blue red rebels deck but all the white equipments do the same thing equip abilities you activate other equipment cost one less to activate an equipped creature has double strike you can equip it for five and we also have jor kadeen first gold warden this is a two drop two two it's a human rebel again in white red with Trample, whenever Jor Kadeen first Gold Warden attacks, it gets plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then, if uh, their power is four or greater, you can draw a card. I do want to comment on red-white equipment. I think it's probably going to be a little bit better in this set. We haven't seen a ton of them yet, but we've seen enough to know that these equipments are pretty decently costed for coming in with a 2-2 Rebel already equipped to them. Their equip costs are higher, though, so it's not like you can, you can just play this out let it die and then re-equip it immediately. The equip costs are higher because you get that 2-2 Rebel. But I think this is a cool way of doing equipment. This looks like living weapon from past sets where your equipment comes in and it already has a body attached to it. I think it's pretty cool. So that's it for the video today. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up. It's free. It supports the channel. I really appreciate all of you who do that. And consider subscribing for more Magic the Gathering content. I know that some of the mechanics are a little bit unclear because we don't have access to a ton of the cards yet. But... It does seem to me, and I think maybe you'll agree, that there is a lot of bleed over and there's a lot of toxic in this set, right? Because there's blue-black, there's uh, white-black, there's green toxic things, there's green-black toxic things. So there's just toxic all over the place. And I think it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit strange to have one mechanic bleed over into all the different colors and then have them handle it differently. So I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about the set and if this toxic thing going into all the different archetypes, except for like red and white, um, how do you think it's going to play out? Is it going to be a fast format, slow format? Let me know. Thanks. Have a great day.